Hey, it's Tim from Wayland Jazz Lessons, and today I'm going to show you a bunch of different choices that you can play on a five dominant chord. And stick around because later in the video, I've got some really cool ways that you can practice them. There's really no mystery to this one. This is a vocabulary expander. Um, really, the sole purpose of this video is just to show you the numerous choices that you can play on a five dominant chord. Now, when I'm talking about a five chord, I'm talking about in the context of five to one in a key or a two five one. It could be for secondary dominance. It could be going from the five to the tonic. It's not really dealing too much with tritone substitution or backdoor dominance, which we'll get to in a different video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna organize them in three tiers. Tier one is going to be not really altered at all. No altered extensions, no flat nines, no sharp nines, no flat 13, sharp 11. The second tier, we'll get into the different types of altered scales we can play for a five chord. And then the third tier will be um, kind of borrowed, uh, borrowed ideas, uh, stuff taken from pentatonics and maybe four note groupings and things like that. So it's kind of goes from kind of basic to a little bit more advanced. Okay, level one. This is the no alterations level. This is essentially two scales we're gonna focus on. Well, one scale and then a variation. Uh, we're talking in this context, if we're in the key of C, our five chord is G. And if we play the C major scale starting on the fifth degree, we get the mixolydian mode. So our first scale here is G mixolydian. There are no altered extensions. There's a natural nine, natural 13, and a natural 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. One, nine, three, 11, five, 13, flat seven, one. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play these in the context of a two, five, one, just so you can hear each one. So here's, the, here's what the mixolydian would sound like in C major with no alterations. Let's do another example. So you can hear it, it's just very pretty, okay? So mixolydian. The second one, it's G mixolydian with an added half step and we call this the the dominant seven bebop scale in a major key. So all we have here, we have G, G mixolydian, but now we're going to add a half step between the G and the F, between seven and eight. So between seven and one, I should say. It's the same thing, but one makes more sense. So one major seven, flat seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here's this in context. The added half step goes from a seven note, one and two and three and four and, so you see how with no half steps, we resolve on the offbeat. One and two and three and four and. But if we add that, if we add the half step, we get eight notes and it makes it more symmetrical. One and two and three and four and one. It, it resolves us back on a, on a strong tone, okay? So that's tier one. We're gonna get more into how to practice them in a little bit. Level two. Now we get into things that can make the five chord have a bit more interest and we call these altered scales. And there's gonna be four of them that I'm gonna talk about. Basically, it's what's something we call the half whole diminished. There's the actual altered scale or diminished whole tone, which is the seventh mode of melodic minor. We have mixolydian flat two, flat six, which is the fifth mode of harmonic minor. And then we've got a variation of that scale. It's the dominant seven flat nine bebop scale which is similar to the other one we did, but now with some alterations. I'm gonna also talk about 
how each of these resolve to major or minor, okay? So the first one we're gonna deal with is the uh, half whole diminished. So here is G7 not altered. Natural nine, flat 13. With the half whole diminished, we can now flat the nine and sharp the nine and have a sharp 11. <laughs> Unaltered, half hold diminished. Now, what we mean by half hold diminished is the scale is alternating between from the root of G7, a half step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a half step, and then we're back up to one. Half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. Just a point, if we do it in reverse, it's the opposite. Whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half. But when we talk about half, whole, the label is, is an ascending scale, okay? Okay. What this also is, it's two diminished seventh chords a whole step apart. Um, G diminished, A flat diminished. If you look at the A flat diminished, it actually spells out a G7 flat nine chord. A flat, B, D, F. Flat nine, the third of G7, the fifth of G7 the seventh of G7. Okay, that's just a thing to notice. And what you'll see is if you play this up to scale, it just, it's alternating between the two. G diminished, A flat diminished, 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 G. We'll get much more on the diminished chords in a different video, but I just want to show you how it's structured. This chord, if you play this scale, it's an altered five chord that resolves to major. And the reason for that is the 13 is natural, which is also the major third of, a, of the one chord. So this is a altered chord that most of the time resolves to major. It's not all the time, these are just You'll find with these rules, they can be broken, but I'm more concerned with getting you to understand how, they, how, the, how it works, okay? In the context of a 2-5-1, let's see. And you can have like diminished patterns. The reason for this is everything in diminished can move by minor thirds. So any, any pattern you play in the scale, you can move these up by minor thirds. Listen to the difference between G7 unaltered and diminished. Unaltered. Altered, diminished. Okay. The next is the altered dominant scale. G7 unaltered. The altered dominant has every alteration. Flat nine, sharp nine, sharp 11, and flat 13. It's the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. So A flat melodic minor is this. If we go take the root down a half step and play that same scale starting on G, G is the seventh mode of A flat melodic minor. So to get the altered scale, 
you play the seventh mode of the altered of the melodic minor scale. So G7 altered. is the A flat melodic minor scale. So if you have, if you want to figure it out, C7 altered, C is the seventh degree of D flat melodic minor. So you'd play the D flat melodic minor scale starting on C. A flat melodic minor. G7 altered, A flat melodic minor starting on G. Okay, let's hear that in context. Oh, really quick. This scale can resolve either to major or it can resolve to minor, either one. When you have all the alterations, because the 13 can resolve up to the major third. When you go to C, G7, flat 13 can also stay the same and resolve to minor. So the altered scale can resolve to either major or minor. Here it is in major. Minor. Hear the difference? G7, G7 altered. Sharp nine, root flat nine, sharp nine, third, sharp 11, flat 13, seven, root. Okay, next one. Mixolydian flat two, flat six. This is also the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. So if we take G mixolydian, we've got the natural two, three, four, five, natural six, seven, one. Now if we flat the two and the 13, there's the natural two and the natural 13. Also the the natural nine, natural 13, also the two and the six. Now, if we flat the two and flat the six, it gives us a flat nine, flat 13 chord. This also can resolve to either major or minor. It pulls towards minor just because of the sound, but here's the scale. This is, check out the unaltered. Flat two, flat six. Resolving to major. Minor. It's got kind of an exotic sound to it. Almost like a flamenco. Spanish feel. Okay, so that's the Mixolydian flat two, flat six. Now a variation on the Mixolydian flat two, flat six. It's the same scale, but now we're gonna do the dominant seven, flat nine, flat 13 bebop scale, which we take this same scale, but we're gonna add a half step between seven and one. This also gives us that uh, resolution, symmetrical resolution. One and two and three and four and one. We're gonna cover bebop scales in a different video, but this is again, this is just an introduction. I just wanna introduce you to these sounds. Um, if we're doing this in context, I went to major then minor. Uh,
This scale almost sounds a little out of place in, in major, but it can work. Here it is in minor. You can really hear it. So that's the Mixolydian flat two, flat six bebop scale. To finish this level out, I want to do one um, variation on the altered dominant scale, the seventh mode of melodic minor. Basically, we're going to get rid of one, two, three, four, the fourth tone, the sharp 11, and it's going to become a six note scale. This is a really, this is a really effective scale uh, because the six note also make it symmetrical. So we've got one, flat two or flat nine, sharp nine, third, up a major third to the flat 13, seven, one. It's great for doing runs, um, but it's also really nice in the context of these lines. Not the best demonstration, but you get the idea. So alter dominant, six note scale, is a great one. And now level three. These are the borrowed, kind of more abstract ideas. I'm just gonna do two of them. Again, I'm not giving you every choice. I'm just giving you a bunch that you can think about, okay? The first one is, is borrowing a major pentatonic scale. So the pentatonic scale is one, two, three, five, six. It's a five note scale. One, two, three, five, six. Okay, I'm playing D flat major pentatonic right now. All right. Where this gets interesting now is you can take scales, borrow them from other scales and superimpose them over other chords. So if I move this to G7, I can now play the D flat major pentatonic over G7. Pretty crazy, right? Because basically we're starting the pentatonic on the sharp 11 or the flat five of the dominant chord. So G7, the flat five or sharp 11 is C sharp or D flat. If we play the D flat major pentatonic over G, we get sharp 11, flat 13, flat seven, flat nine, sharp nine. This can also work in minor. You can get super modern with it. Okay, so pentatonics, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to take things a little further out. Last, we got what we call four note groupings and their arpeggios. So it's just a cell of four notes that can spell out alterations of the chord. So if we have uh, this first one over G7 altered, it's just one, three, five, flat six. It's basically a G triad 
and then a flat six or a flat 13. The next one, it's another four note grouping, three, flat 13, root, sharp nine, or f three, flat six, root, or the flat third. But the tensions are flat 13, sharp nine. That was the wrong one. So the first one was this one, and now we've got this one. That's also a great little uh, technical exercise. Let's run that up and down the keys. But that's a great one. Last one. Sharp nine, flat nine, flat 13, third. I think I heard Mulgrew Miller do this one for the first time. Sharp nine, flat nine, flat 13, third. Okay, so that's all of them. We've got Mixolydian. We've got Mixolydian Bebop scale. Okay. Got half whole diminished. We have got the G7 altered scale, half step below A flat melodic minor. Okay, and then we've got Mixolydian flat two, flat six. And then the variation, we've got the Mixolydian flat two, flat six bebop scale, the dominant seven flat nine bebop scale. The variation of the altered, <clears throat> the six note, one flat nine, sharp nine, third flat 13, flat seven root. Okay, and then what do we got? Oh, and then we've got G major, the, the G um, pentatonic, which is D flat major pentatonic over G, which is G7 altered. And then we have our phono groupings. That's a bunch of them. Now let's talk about practicing them a little bit. Practice tip number one. Obviously you need to learn the scales. Don't just learn them going up and down. You need to be able to see them both ascending on its own and descending on its own. So practice it ascending only through the circle, then practice it descending only through the circle, not connected together. I'm gonna start on G and then kind of go through the circle for a few. This is how you build vocabulary. You gotta start somewhere. Now go down. Okay, so ascending and descending individually. Do that for each of these scales. Practice tip number two. This is where it starts to become a little more musical. Now what you wanna do is get comfortable with the notes of the scale in any order. So we're not just going, let's do the altered, okay? What you wanna do is I would set a metronome, find a tempo, and you're just gonna improvise, but you can't play any wrong notes. It has to be all the notes in the scale. But the goal here is, to try to play different shapes and intervals, maybe 
get a little bit rhythmic with it, try to play off beats. Pretend you're playing a solo, but you can only play it over that one scale. And I think a good thing to do, maybe do it for eight to 16 measures on each chord, and then after those eight or 16 measures, move to the next chord in the circle. So I'll show you. I'm gonna do eight measures of just a, maybe two or three of them, starting with G7, then we'll go to C7, then we'll go to F7, and so forth. One, two, three, four. So you get the idea. I'm just taking each chord and moving it through the circle. What this will do, this will start to get you to think about it as an improviser, not just running scales. Practice tip number three. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of creating exercises to put these things together. You can take these scales and maybe write out a two, five, one phrase and use that as a, something that you can take through the keys. Creating exercises is a great way to internalize things and to just make it a part of what you do. So I have a few that I did and I'll show you, show you what I did to kind of put these into action. Okay, so this is a, uh, an exercise using the unaltered bebop scale. Um, it's disguised in there because I have an arpeggio happening and then I'm using some of the half steps from the scale. But here it is in the context. Well, here's the, we're in the key of B flat. C minor 7, F7, B flat major. Now we're on the F7, here's what I have. We've got 3, 5, 7, 9 arpeggio, and then the bebop, and then an approach to the, to the B flat major. In the context of the exercise we have, So that brings that scale to life because now we have a concrete thing that we put it into. Whoops. <laughs> so that's an example of the G7 bebop scale or F7 in this case. The second example is using the altered dominant scale vocabulary. We're gonna use it over A7. Remember A7 altered is a half step below B flat, so we use the B flat melodic minor scale starting on A. We're doing it in the context of a two, five, one in the key of D minor. E half diminished, A7 altered, D minor six. Here's the, here's the vocabulary we're gonna use for the A7. Resolving to D minor. Here it is in the context of this line. Last one, we're gonna try using the pentatonic scale that starts on the flat five or sharp 11 of the five chord. Context of C major, we're gonna do two, five, one. D minor seven, G seven altered, C major. The material for the five chord is this. Sharp nine, flat nine, flat seven, flat nine, flat 13, sharp 11, sharp nine, flat nine. Resolve to the fifth. If we do this in the context of the line, I'll go a little slower just so you can hear it. Whatever I wrote there, let me, let me play what I wrote. <laughs> A 
It's a nice one. So that's great. And as always, all of these things, take these and anytime you're working on a tune, whenever you see a five chord, say for this practice session, I'm just gonna work on my altered dominant, like the melodic minor. Or if I'm working on a minor tune, I'm gonna work on the mixolydian flat two, flat six. Again with this, it's not about doing all of them at once. I, you know, pick, pick one, work on that for a month. For a month, just say, on every five chord, I'm gonna play the altered dominant scale. And just take your time. I know this is a lot, but I think the good thing about these videos is they're here and you can look at them whenever you want. You can reference them whenever you want. Like they're not going anywhere. So maybe only focus on one little part of it and then come back in a little while and check out other parts. And the key here is transpose all of this into every key. Remember, every key opens up your landscape. If you're looking to improve your technique and expand your vocabulary, I would love it if you check out my jazz warm-ups and etudes package. It's a free set of four etudes over four common song forms, tune-up, the blues, rhythm changes, and autumn leaves. Uh, and I know it'll help you out. Just hit the link below. All right, I hope this was somewhat beneficial. I know it's a lot, but, uh, you know, I hope you got something out of it. And uh, as always, have a good one and happy practicing.